Norfolk Southern, a railroad you either love or a railroad you hate. I personally am not a fan of them nowadays, seeing how they're being managed is questionable. But I mean, you could say that about every Class 1 railroad. There would have been a time like 8 years ago where I would have told you Ennis was the best American railroad. Because I have fond memories of going to Altoona as a little boy and seeing the Juniata shops, the world's famous horseshoe curve, and the Railroaders Memorial Museum. It felt like a step into heaven, so to speak. I would say the main reason why Ennis sort of declined was not only because of PSR, but because of its ever so infamous power purge. In normal practice, whenever a series of locomotives becomes outdated or unreliable, the natural case is to just retire the fleet gradually while keeping the reliable members running until they shit themselves. For Norfolk Southern's case, it's wiped out an entire series hastily without any second thought whatsoever. This started out really in 2019 with the retirements of the remaining SE60s across standard cab, isolated, wide cab, and triclops variants. Damn, all four variants. Not to mention the infamous OCS units being retired, as from what I remember hearing, the F units were costing too much money to operate that we waste. Yeah, last there was sarcasm, I apologize. But if that wasn't a kick to the balls, Norfolk Southern would shoot their own balls in 2020 when they would announce their plans to wipe out 703 locomotives off their roster, which include, but not limited to, a handful of SC40 2s and GP38s, some yard slugs, MP15 E's, all GP 59s, X Conroe Y caps, SC 80 Max, SC 70s, SC 70 M's, SC 75 M's, SC 70 M 2s, and later, half of their fleet of SC 70 ACUs. To say that NS Rail fans were outraged would be an understatement. While there were some people that were fine with this fine. and understood why, some Rail fans weren't really pleased. From Norfolk Southern's perspective, it was to downsize its fleet to a more standardized roster and get rid of the least efficient units, which I can understand coming from a business perspective. But you can clearly tell this is because of PSR with the road's absurdly dumb top 21 plan. In all honesty, I can understand some locomotives to be retired, like the Dash 8s and the SC60s as, let's face it, they're on their way out in the 2020s if Canadian nationals ain't in to go by. However, despite the Dash 8s and SC60s having an understandable retirement, some SC40-2s and GP38-2s, and as well as GP40-2s, are also getting retired, which I don't get, seeing as those units are extremely relevant nowadays, given the fact that they are the backbone of many rail yards and local freight trains. NS is likely retiring units that have slight mechanical problems instead of fixing them in their own Juniata shops. I can imagine a scenario goes something like this. Uh, sir, 3215 needs new cylinders for his engine. Other than that, it's still in decent shape to return a Throw it out. But, sir, it won't cost much to get a new cylinder for this unit. I'm only following up management wants me to do. Just retire the locomotive and throw it in the junior deadline. I will say, though, the most questionable and sad retirements to these units, I'd have to give the title to the SD-70s, as they end up purging all of their variants, minus the modern ones at least, which is sad and frustrating, seeing as NS clearly had plans on rebuilding its old SC-70s and SC-70 ACCs, and I have the feeling they would have done the same to the 70Ms and 75Ms as well. My guess is that NS's management just didn't want to go through with making more rebuild programs, hence why you haven't seen any new SC-70 ACCs since 2019. The SC-70M-2s are also a sad fate, as they wouldn't need an extensive rebuild, they could have just rebuilt the locomotives that have AC traction and classify them as SC-70 Aces. And after all, they are rather young units, only being built in 2005, which is only 15 years in service, which is half the life expectancy of a regular diesel locomotive, and yet Norfolk Southern just throws the fuck you three minutes. But I will say though, the ACUs and 80 Max also have questionable fates, seeing as, to my knowledge, no one really complained about the reliability of the 80 Max, as Let's be real, they're more reliable than the 90 Mac, I mean, ACUs. Almost half of the ACU fleet was sold off, which is understandable and sad, seeing as, one, the ACUs were not really mechanically better, even with the ACU uh, cab, but at the same time, it's also frustrating seeing as Norfolk Southern bought these locomotives with the intention of rebuilding them to better units, only to sell half them off when even half of them have not even entered in five years of service. But... You know, the 90 Max were not even reliable diesels anyway, so I can kind of understand why. It's like developing a game, thinking it's going to be perfect, but you discover a few minor bugs of it, and instead of fixing them, you scrap the project. 
Because of this decision, the consequences from the power purge are really apparent of how Norfolk Southern is nowadays. From current locomotives showing rust marks and likely straining themselves due to longer trains, constantly having to bar other locomotives from other railroads, and suffering from never-ending power shortages thanks to this change, with Norfolk Southern retiring units and then wondering why they're suffering from their 529th power shortage in a year. It's these decisions that highlight why to never make last minute changes, as they have many consequences that you'll likely regret. Also, damn, we lost a lot of 80 max.